Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Grow Your Influence podcast. In this episode, I'm talking with Monique Farmer, who is the founder of Women Want Adventure. And I'm so excited. I met Monique a few weeks ago, and I think what she's doing is fabulous. And there's so much in there around creativity and the sorts of experiences she offers and the why behind why she does what she does. So, Monique, welcome and thank you for joining us. Juliet, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Fabulous. Now, let's start off by talking a little bit about how you got to where you got. Women Want Adventure, where did it start and why? Oh, a lot has changed <laughs> uh, with Women Want Adventure since I began six years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's really grown from a place out of desire to connect to nature and other women. I used to be quite uh, <clears throat> lonely when I was teaching out in the country and I wanted to get out on weekends and do something different, mm -hmm. something meaningful as opposed to a quick coffee catch up and avocado on toast. I not only wanted to challenge myself and try something new, but I wanted to share that experience with other women. And I was fortunate enough to have a background in outdoor education and recreation. So having that self-confidence already was something that I was very fortunate to have and those skills. And I decided to turn that into a business where I could instill the confidence in other women to get out there and try something new. And here we are six years later <laughs> with the most wonderful community that is having an impact in women's lives. Yeah, which is such a fabulous thing to do. And I think you really have, you found something that it, it is so difficult for women, I think, as you say, just to get out and do things um, because of confidence, but also company and equipment and all of those sorts of things. There's a whole lot of practical things in there as well as those more emotional things, aren't there? Yeah, definitely. Not all of us have been given the opportunity when we were younger, for instance, to go on an overnight hike or jump in a kayak or go snowshoeing, canyoning, whatever the activity might be. Sometimes we need the encouragement and particularly the other person to go with or a group of people to share that experience and instill that confidence. Um, and that's what we do at Women Want Adventure. So I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by the most amazing women who every day are getting out there and they, they are challenging themselves, sometimes in small ways, sometimes physically, mentally, emotionally. The women come on trips for many different reasons. Mm. Um, but it's over time that you really can see that impact. I mean, we're in the business of impacting women's lives. So it's really nice to see that firsthand um, yeah, with the women that come on our trips. So you've built a team of guides who have helped you run your trips. How have you found that process of building your team? How has that worked for you? Well, this process it definitely requires patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some, some of which it has been challenging over mm -hmm. the years. Um, what I realise now that's really important to understand is that six years ago, I was at the grassroots level um, running a company, running a startup, doing all the different jobs at once. Many others who are founders and who have startups will understand this. You wear a lot of different hats. Mm. But today I think it's important to understand when you're no longer the best person for the job mm -hmm. and that you need to start building your team to step away from the business and I think I've asked myself questions such as, you know, when is it the right time to step away? And that's a really hard question because when you have your baby, when you have your startup and you need to step away from certain areas of the business, it can be really, really scary in that process of developing a team. Like who do you hire? When do you hire them? <laughs> How do you hire them? But I have always ultimately believed that a team, they're the backbone, backbone of a business and they're particularly a, the backbone of a startup. So six years ago, I was the only employee mm -hmm. and I now have a 
brilliant team of 12 guides and what they're so good at doing is being authentic and genuine and they bring passion to what they're doing uh, with the community and on the trips. They really, really care. And I think this sort of filters into having really loyal customers um, within Women One Adventure. And I always say, um, you know, happy guides make happy profits. You have to think about that when building a team. Yeah. Is your team happy? And not only are they looking for the paycheck at the end of the day, I want my team to go home with a sense of pride. Mm. I want them to go home and know that they're in the business of impacting lives so mm. they can finish a trip and be really proud that they've made a difference in a woman's lives, whether it's because they're happier or they've tried something new or they've connected with a new friend. Mm. I think that's been a, a part of the process of building the team. Yeah. Um, which is an just interesting really one, important it? yeah because mm. it's true if your staff are happy almost inevitably that flows through to your customers but your your team are presumably all out in the field and you're not sort of sitting in an office together how do you keep them connected to your why how do you keep them connected to the vision for your business and and to the culture that you want to create mm. Well, it comes down really to the process of hiring. Um, when we hire anyone for our team, they have to be connected to the core values and the mission mm -hmm. of Women One Adventure and then be willing to learn and grow. And if we have those two things to start off in particular, it makes it a lot easier to be in a business where our guides are quite nomadic. They'll be working in Western Australia, then New South Wales, then down in Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> but if they're always connected to our core values, which is connecting, empowering, inspiring women, I know that then collectively together, we're all on the same path mm -hmm. to um, you know, reaching those goals as a team and we've we've had a lot of fun even though we're in different locations we'll jump on um team calls zoom meetings we have a facebook chat we we celebrate a lot with our team so mm -hmm. after trips what went really well what were some funny moments we share a lot of photos just so we can begin to like foster and care for that team environment um and make the team feel feel valued because they are they like I said before they're the backbone of the business and I think yeah. th another point would be building a team um, that build each other up and that's what my team are just absolutely amazing at doing mm. they help lift each other up they help upskill they encourage each other Mm. and um, they learn from each other so that's really important when we're living in different locations that they're always encouraging one another to do their best and to help each other out so how do you bring new people into the team and make sure they understand that culture and are a part of it as quickly as possible do you have a sort of induction process or do you just sort of scoop them up into the next zoom meeting and off we go <laughs> usually with the outdoor and travel industry I go a lot by recommendation so I'm a people person and I try my best to surround myself with people who are uplifting who are go-getters who are also curious mm -hmm. about life about business and particularly about impact so mm -hmm. our onboarding and induction process will always come back to does this future employee have the ability to connect to our core values and our mission? Mm -hmm. And then are they willing to learn and grow? Mm -hmm. And are they a team player? Mm -hmm. Because in for what we do, they not only need to be a guide and to nurture and care for our clients out mm -hmm. in some wild places. <laughs> they they really need to to work with other guides um, and, and report back to the team. So yeah, the, the induction process, there's a little involved and step one is usually meeting in person and having them come on a trip and, and observing how they react to different situations. 
um, and ultimately are they a good person? <laughs> yeah, okay. So tell me, what sort of challenges have you encountered along the way? Because six years and 12 staff members, have there been some stumbles? Have there been things you've had to sort of work through either as the leader or with your team? Well, like any other business, I am faced with a number of challenges, especially navigating through the fires, uh, a pandemic, the mm -hmm. floods, which have brought on many landslides, national park closures. Yeah. You know, at Women Want Adventure, we're trying to establish a company through these extremely difficult environmental circumstances. And this isn't just Women Want Adventure alone, it's for many other small and larger businesses. Yeah. And it's hard to, to navigate through these times while building a trusted brand. That's been the biggest challenge so far, even just to keep operations um, operations going, why we're almost been at a standstill sometimes during the pandemic and the floods. But to overcome these challenges, it's always been a focus on providing exceptional experiences. Mm. So it doesn't matter if we now have two bookings or one booking on a trip. Our team are amazing at providing this outstanding experience for the women and showing the support to our community. So I think that's our credibility and it's what strengthened what we have as a community and that I think our community can see that whatever's thrown at us, because they know about the fires and they know about the floods and everyone knows about the pandemic, but they also know at Women One Adventure, we don't give up and we're not giving up on the women. Mm -hmm. We're going to be there for them, whether it's on the trail, whether it's in the kayak or whether it's there to um, stick by them, um, no matter what's thrown our way. So that's how we overcome it. We just stay authentic and we work really hard. So how did you keep yourself going through all of these? Because it's really tough to set up a business and a couple of years in have these all these things coming at you, which must have made it very difficult just to run operations for a while there. How did you keep yourself motivated and how did you keep your staff motivated when there was probably a limit to what they could do at various times? I think in business, you can't always step forward, but you can step sideways. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely what we did during all of the fires, pandemic and the floods, during that long list of challenges, I say. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, no, we, we did. We stepped sideways. So we thought, OK, what else could we do? How else could we be transparent with the team and the community? So we jumped online during the pandemic to create community challenges, community meetups to help inspire and empower women to still get active, do what they could mm -hmm. at home, get mm -hmm. out in their local areas, step out into nature. Like we know nature is good for us. It's good for our health, um, our happiness. It, help, it helps us connect back to the core of who we are. Mm -hmm. um, so during these difficult times, it wasn't always what can we bring in that's new? What could we work on just to nurture and foster the community and help people um, that's what we do really well um, and then really I mean challenging times you have to just think outside the box I was also I'm a, I'm a teacher by trade so I was teaching and lecturing at university um, I was doing anything I could to help keep my startup alive and as I said before I think this reflects back to what we stand for to impact women's lives at Women One Adventure is we're not going to give up. So not only myself, but my team will do what they can um, mm -hmm. when sometimes it seems like there is nothing to do. So we were guiding, we were guiding as much as we could. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully in the next few months, um, things start to improve to help mm -hmm. women get back out there. Life is getting back to normal, I sense, isn't it? It's sort of starting to there's a sense that people are starting to get back out and doing things getting on with life definitely we all need it <laughs> Good for us. so tell me so you take women out of their comfort zones all the time what gets you out of your comfort zone in an adventure sense yeah maybe, or even in a leadership sense or is that just running a business oh 
I'll go <laughs> running it every day. I'm out of my comfort zone. I'll go with the adventure first because yeah. it, um, it translates to business mm. and that's what I love so much about adventure. It can be something that challenges you a little or it could be something that challenges you a lot. It's stepping out of your comfort zone. Usually every time you lace on your hiking boots or you step in, you, you see kayak. I love doing solo large adventures and I like going on my own to test my self-limiting beliefs of, oh, you can't go on a nine-day solo hike in the Tasmanian wilderness you'll get eaten alive by snakes and go hungry. You know, what's, yeah. you know, what's to come with the, the unknown mm. is what pushes me outside my comfort zone. But I, I love it. I love being outside of that comfort zone because that's when I feel like I'm growing as a person mm. and I'm discovering a lot about myself. Um, and then I trend, I use that and I think it translates to, a lot of what we do in business so I'll come back into the office and know all right well I just did a solo hike by myself for nine days I'm going to take on this new business project I'm going to cold call a mentor I've been looking to approach for six months it helps me take other challenges I definitely feel outside my comfort zone when I step out of my routine and try something new, but then follow through with it. Yeah. But having the adventure experience, I think helps give me the confidence um, in the business world as well to take action on those things. It is so interesting, isn't it? You know, it's that whole, as Glenn and Doyle will say, we can do hard things. And sometimes yeah. we just need to remind ourselves that we can do it. And when you're sitting in your day-to-day life, it can be easy to forget that, I think. So you're mm, not and- having- pushing yourself and realizing you can do things physically and psychologically and you're bringing that back to the office which I think is so interesting yeah Mm. and really powerful um so what are you doing your downtime when you're not doing nine day hikes in the Tasmanian wilderness and not running a business (laughs) what else do you get up to um I love to cook I think it slows me down because even when I'm not out guiding in the field and adventuring I still like to get out to adventure (laughs) Um, I I love what we do at Women Want Adventure and that's partially because I just I love the outdoors Mm -hmm. but then creating a sense of separation from always um, being outdoors and I've found a love for growing veggies in my backyard and then picking them and spending time in my kitchen cooking up meals um, it slows me down and I really enjoy that process. Um, I also love to get out and ocean swim. I'm really lucky where I live. I'm only five minutes away from the ocean and I've got a beautiful group of friends. So we meet up for morning ocean swims and then I go home and love to do a big cook up in the afternoon. That's usually where you'll find me. Wow. Otherwise, for the downtime, <laughs> I'm still back out there. Addicted to adventure is what they say. I Fantastic. hope it's a healthy one. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So does your cooking translate out onto the trips? Do you take new recipes out onto the trip? Definitely. I actually have an overnight hike coming up this weekend and I've already started to plan what I'm making the ladies pre-putting all the nuts and seeds for their breakfast packs and thinking about what vegetables I'm going to put into the dinners. I think our community is quite surprised when we're in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden I'll whip out vegetable spring rolls and home-baked items. (laughs) They never expect it to be quite, um, yeah, nourishing. Um, But it's amazing what you can do with wilderness cooking and the skills that you develop over time. So I love feeding uh, the women amazing meals on the trip. I mean, there's nothing better than sitting around the campfire after hiking all day and then being fed well. I think that's all part of it. Totally. I, in fact, I was joking with friends on the weekend, uh, part of my schooling, we were sent out hiking, but they would send us out with things like packets of dead, dried mashed <laughs> potato that you had to sort of reconstitute and, throw, and, you know, those dried peas and tins of stuff, you know, and it, I, I think we've come such a long way, which is so nice because food is a huge part of not just how we nourish ourselves physically, but that whole sitting around sharing something a bit special when you're out in the middle of nowhere, I can imagine is a really wonderful thing. 
Yeah, definitely. And it's something that you can control. You can't control yeah. the weather. Yeah. You can't control the windy days you get on the top of mountains, but you can control the nice warm porridge and uh, berries that you have in the morning. And sometimes yeah. it's the food that's going to get you through a day <laughs> where it's a bit wild and yeah. wild out there. So the little surprises. Yeah. Definitely. I won't give away all my secrets. No, no, no. But... Don't. And I do, I see, I've seen that there's an Anzac biscuit theme that runs through your trips too. So I will let people discover that when they come and travel with you. Yeah, um, it's a bit of a competition actually between oh, our it? guides of okay. who bakes the best Anzac biscuits. I like okay. mine a little bit crunchy on the outside and soft in the middle, mm -hmm. but you'll have to come on a trip to uh, decide what one you like for the best. Well, that is, I mean, it's controversial, isn't it? What is the best Anzac biscuit? Because we do all yeah. have our faves. So. That's true. <laughs> so tell me, um, some advice you would give yourself if you were starting out now. Have you got some, anything that you would sort of tell yourself to do that you've learned along the way? First one would be build the system. Yeah. So six years ago, I was so excited to build Women One Adventure, mm -hmm. do absolutely everything and anything to build the community and the brand, but what I didn't know at the time, which is so vital and important for any startup, is to just talk to as many people as possible and work on the back end processes. Mm -hmm. So have your big picture, but don't worry about how the little things look or even something like the name of your company. You might spend two weeks just pondering about the name of your company. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about how the website looks. You need to concentrate on the customer journey. Yes. And even if it's learning a little bit of code, contacting developers, we're in a technical world, mm. you need to get your systems right. Yes. Um, what can you automate? And think big picture. So don't think two years ahead. Think 10 years ahead and that can be really challenging mm. in a startup as well um but it's definitely something I wish I had put more time and thought in because later down the line if you're a, someone who um, has a startup and you're listening to this you um, will spend more money and time if you don't get your systems right from the get-go and naturally they're always going to change things evolve mm. uh, but really focus on the system would be the first one mm. and interesting Cash, that you say that yeah. too because it's about getting the customer experience as seamless as possible isn't it so that they yeah. don't notice the system in a way they don't notice the process it just helps them come in and find you and engage with you as quickly as possible yes and they they want to trust you as mm. well so yeah. every stage of that system, yeah. you need to really think through um, and, and and get that right and be open to be, um, you need to adapt it as your business grows. Yeah. Um, I would also add, if I could go back, um, is cash flow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always about cash flow and knowing your numbers. Mm -hmm. So thinking about questions such as, are we getting value from this product or in our circumstance? Like, are we getting value from this trip or this event? Mm -hmm. um, and looking at where you're spending every dollar mm -hmm. on your business mm -hmm. because you're, you're going to be busy and you forget where you're spending money and it all adds up. So cash flow and knowing your numbers, really important. If you're not sure where to start, uh, uh, I'm a big fan of asking others, asking yeah. other businesses, like, what do you do? What system do you have in um, in place to track your numbers? Mm -hmm. um, that's really important. And it sort of leads into my next point of um, not only should you track your numbers, but also finding a metric that engages people um, around and within your business to so you're knowing how many people you're impacting, how many customers you're reaching. And when you have a new business, again, you're so exciting. So you think, oh, I'll just figure that out as it goes. <laughs> but in relation to Women Want Adventure, these metrics are really important because 
you know, we want to know the stories and the impact that we're having in women's lives. And this is important because it speaks to our reach and our numbers of women who are then talking about the business. Mm -hmm. So if you can build the system, if you can know the cash flow and your numbers, but Mm -hmm. then you can find a metric to measure growth and success, I think that's really going to set you up um, for for hopefully um, a successful business. And I think that last one is so interesting too because you need metrics that motivate your team, don't you? Mm, so yes. the number of people on a trip is not particularly motivating for them, although it's completely motivating for you. But for them, it's more about would people recommend it presumably and the experience that they have on the trip. So finding the right metrics for them, but metrics that are useful for you is going to be important, isn't it? Definitely. And coming back to the question, and you should almost come back to this every day, every week, what are people saying about your business? And not only what are they saying about your business, but are you listening to what they're saying about your business and then adapting to what they're saying? Um, Obviously, you want it to be positive things. But one thing is, you know, sometimes you might have to give up on wanting to be liked by every single customer Mm -hmm. Um, I think you're going to have to make tough decisions I've definitely had to make some and continue to make tough decisions but listening to clients is really important listening Mm -hmm. to their stories listening to what impact you have Um, yeah I found that to be quite useful and something that I should have focused more on um, during the past six years but definitely something that um, I think about a lot today Thank you. Gosh, I think it's so inspiring to hear how strong your your why is. And I can see why that brings people, you know, both your team members, but also your customers. Because it's so clear what you stand for and what you're trying to do in the business. And that must flow through to everything you do. You can just hear it in the way that you talk about it. So it's really inspiring. Thank you so much. Yeah, I feel very fortunate to, um, you know, lead a team that are very passionate about what they do. They're authentic and um, we really love our jobs. Mm. It's not only fun and enjoyable to be out there with ladies swimming with whale sharks or camping in the wilderness, but knowing that we're really helping um, women overcome self-limiting beliefs, get out there, make the most of their lives connect with each other and um yeah I I I feel very very passionate about what I do and so do so do my team I love that look thank you so much for bringing your passion to our podcast today Monique um tell us what 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 trips have you got going out over the summer over the summer, we have our Tasmanian trips, which are um, soon to depart. So hiking the overland and the walls of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And then over Christmas, we do take a little break in New South Wales and interstate. Our Australian summer gets quite hot. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we tend to focus on the water-based activities, such as an easy kayak um, or getting away for an overnight canoe trip. We have some canoe trips up the Shoalhaven Gorge in New South Wales or down in Victoria on Lake Eildon Mm -hmm. and spending the the summer on the water is always a nice way to cool off before we kick start things again next year um, canyoning and having a good time there's always a bit of a mix something for everyone I'd say Juliet you'll have to come out and join us I can see you in a wetsuit canyoning (laughs) down a, uh, a waterfall I think that would suit you Oh, I'm not sure. I might go with the kayaking first. But I think but you've started overseas trips as well. So you've got a whole lot of variety in there with different length trips, I think, as well. Yes, yeah. Over the summer, we head to New Zealand, um, the land of four seasons in one day. But summertime is quite beautiful over in New Zealand. It's not too hot to go hiking. And then um, hoping to fly over to Nepal with the group next year as well. So there's always many exciting adventures in the works at Women Want Adventure. And we have to just fit them all in. <laughs> well, we'll put some details down below. So um, if you're listening to the podcast, you'll find details on our Facebook page of um, Women Want Adventure with their website and the sorts of trips you can 
join them on. So look, thank you so much, Monique, for joining us. I really appreciate it. It's been fantastic to talk with you about all oh, it's, my, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Juliet. Appreciate no it.